on this channel, I've spoken a little bit about my contracting experience and how you can get into contracting too. But I thought today I'll talk to you guys about how you can actually find contracting roles and opportunities. Now, of course, if you're looking to become a contractor, there are so many different things that this depends on. This depends on your experience and niche expertise. This depends on your qualification. It depends on the market. It depends on the contracting season, so to speak. It depends on the organization and the cultures that are embedded within these organizations that you're applying for. It also depends on availability and also your performance as a person. And so when I say this stuff, when I give you these different examples of how you can get into contracting or find contracting jobs and roles, bear these things in mind. So without further ado, let's not waste no time and let's get straight into it. Now, the first main way in which you can find contracting opportunities is quite simple. You can check job boards and job marketplaces in order to look for these different contracting opportunities. And just like any other nine to five employee star type role, again, you can go on places like CV library, read and places like JobServe in order to find these opportunities. What I'd say to you is that it's important to make sure that you add the right criteria when actually completing the job search. So let's say, for example, you go into CV library. This is one I use quite a bit. You have to obviously update your profile. OK, so add your name, your details, the sort of like key roles you're looking for. So they will ask you what different areas do you think you fit into? So are you within the marketing space? Are you within the IT space? Are you within the public sector, et cetera, et cetera? So they boil this down to like three or five at most. And obviously, the less you have, or the more niche it is, the better. They'll also ask you to update your CV or place your CV on there. Of course, I've spoken about CV writing services before. You can check some of these out. And I'll put the links in the description below. In addition to that, they may ask you to update your cover letter if you feel that is necessary for the type of things that you're looking for. Again, you'll only know that based on looking through the different jobs. So here's a neat thing to understand. Every time you update or upload your profile on these job searches, these are related to or these are associated to different recruiting agencies who get a notification. And so if they feel like your profile and your CV matches what they're looking for in terms of the job market, then they're most likely going to contact you. And I'll come back to this point again. So it's very important to make sure that you update your profile and your CV and all of those different forms of information on your profile. The next thing to say is once you've done all of that stuff, you want to check out the different jobs that are available. So you'll come to a set of filters or criteria. And all you really want to do here is number one, set the amount of money that you're looking to make. Now, of course, we want to make as much money as possible. But let's say, for example, you place down 500 pounds a day because you feel that's maybe something you can start off with. OK, maybe you don't know. So the alternative to that may be typing in the job roles that you're looking for. But the point I'm trying to make here is that you want to narrow it down to a certain number of different jobs available on the market. So let's say you do that. You may want to enter in location, but sometimes I don't do this because we're living in a hybrid slash remote working world at the moment. So when it comes to contracting, it may make sense to not necessarily do that in the first instance until you start seeing what jobs are available. Now, once you've filtered all of this stuff, what you want to do is check to see how many different jobs are available. OK. Now, there's something I, I, I forgot to mention, which is really, really important. It will tell you what type of contract type that you are looking for. So this comes down to full time, part time. This comes down to maybe zero hour workers or whatever it may be. But one of the options is usually contracting or contractor. OK, you want to select that because if you don't select contracting and, you know, all those other things that I mentioned before, then you won't find contracting roles pop up. So it's very important that you select it for contracting. OK, and so you'll see a bunch of different roles. Now, if there are more than a thousand search results for that specific job title or for that specific set of criteria that you've put in there, then see if there's something else that you can change, because again, it may take you 15 to 30 minutes to go through all of the jobs and just look through them. 
Now, of course, if you've updated your CV and you may use your cover letter, then you can apply as you look for these things because there is this thing called easy apply. So usually I click in and then what I will do is read the description, see if it's a fit for me. And if it doesn't feel like a fit, then I'll ignore it. If it does feel like a, a fit for me, then I'll click apply. And easy apply is a perfectly okay thing to do as well. So that's pretty much it. That's what you do when it comes to the job markets online and searching for new roles. Before I continue, I want to tell you guys about a course I created called The Independent Consultant, A Guide to Contracting Within the UK. This is a comprehensive step-by-step -step breakdown of how you can transition into the contracting space. And of course, this helps you so many different ways holistically in your life in order for you to really make certain life goals and life changes that you need. So if this is something that you're interested in, then make sure you check out more information by clicking on the link in the description. Now let's get back into the video. Another great way to find contracting roles is using agencies. Now, of course, they benefit based on the fact that they may make, let's say, £100, £200, £50 off the gross total amount. And so it's a win-win situation. That's the way I see it, at least anyway. And so you can get these agencies to work with you in a number of different ways. So of course, I spoke about using job boards to apply for roles. Of course, you can get connected with these different agencies via that route because they usually contact you or email you. And so there have been many situations week on week where I get calls or emails from agencies because of that simple process. So it's very important to make sure you use those job boards and update your CV where possible. The second way is using referrals. Okay, so if you have people who have worked for those different agencies or through them before, they can get you in touch and a conversation could be brokered. Now, there isn't a guarantee that a conversation will definitely happen, but it can happen in those different situations and circumstances. The third way is via contacting them yourself, okay? So emailing them or calling them. And usually the first thing they will ask you is, you know, what sort of niche or area or industry are you in? And this is almost like a mini pitch. And if it's a good fit, they'll tell you. If not, they'll ask you to send over the, your CV and that will be that. And there you start to develop a relationship. Now that leads me on to a really important point. All of this stuff is based on developing a relationship. And so there are some agents who aren't as proactive. There are some agents you'll only speak to once and there are others you will continue to have this relationship with in order for you guys to grow. One quick tip, if you get contacted by an agent, the best thing to do is to make sure that you keep email communications going. And if, if it's gone a bit stale, don't be afraid to search through your Gmail and contact them and say, you know, what you're looking for, what your rate is, and if there's anything on the market. Okay, so these are all things you can do to keep the fire burning, so to speak, or at least get some sort of interest. Another big way in which you can get contracts is through your connections. I think this is a really important one and one that's underrated. And so the way you do this is in a number of different ways. Number one, you can be quite ballsy and brave and write something out on LinkedIn as an example, and basically let people know that you're on a market and you're looking for a new job and or opportunity. Make it clear that as a contract, make it clear if you want it inside or outside and make it clear in terms of the niche such as change management or PMO, whatever it may be. And you know, if you're lucky, you'll get people contact you. People usually like it or share it or contact you straight away. I know every time I've done this, I've had at least one person contact me with a contracting opportunity. Another way you can do this is to contact people via DM, WhatsApp, those people that you've previously worked with, most notably other contractors or people you know you used to work with in a certain employer's organization or friends and family, okay? These are all opportunities to get in touch with people to try to understand if there's anything, but you're not having that sort of conversation. You're having a catch up and inevitably with that catch up, you're going to be talking about your work status, okay? If you're unemployed or looking for a new role. And so this is where you can naturally and genuinely talk about what your current situation is as well. One great source, again, of getting a new contract is through old employers, okay? Because they know you, because they understand your value or have an idea of what your value is, they may be more inclined to want to bring you in on a contracting opportunity. So these are all different things that you can do in order to secure a contract. And then it becomes a continuous thing. 
Okay. Now you have to remember that there are different seasons and cycles that exist within a contract in space. So that's something you need to look out for. And you have to use a bit of common sense here. If, you know, summer is usually a time where people go on holidays, then it may be a bit of a dry season. Okay. So these are things to just bear in mind when you're looking for a new contract. Now I'll be interested to know out of all these different opportunities and ways to find a contract, which one stands out to you the most? Anyway, like I stated before, if you're interested in becoming a contractor and you want a comprehensive breakdown, then make sure you click the link below to check out the course I created called the Independent Consultant, a contractor's guide within the UK. If you want to see more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. And as always, my friends, understand, reach and expand. Peace.